Hey, good afternoon. So as you can see, I'm on stage two right now, and I was testing out all of the values of, from the different color lights. So when I was changing the lights, basically what I was looking for was value transition. So I noticed that in my reference, the color temperature is just too light right here in that area, even though that is a mustache area, or not mustache, beard area. The transition of light right there was way too bright. So what I'm gonna do is I'm coming in now with a little bit of the um, turquoise and my skin tone, which I am using brown now for my skin tone, um, creating a more of a, um, let's just say um, Jewish skin tone, like olives with some browns in here. Um, and his beard is just like super chunky, okay? So I want to make sure that I'm getting the correct values first. So now you can see I kind of darken it up. And right here is where the lighter values are. So it's important for you to make sure you establish your values. Step two, establishing values, okay? So the first step we did was we, and this is under green light, okay? So our first step that we did, we drew everything out and we created shadow shapes and got all of our defined uh, defined shapes to create and form the face, okay? So our second step, okay, now um, is blocking in the correct shadows, okay? And we're doing that with the background color and your choice of, choice of skin tone. Of course, I'm going with the brown and I'm going with the background color, okay? Because that's the look I wanted. Now, I'm not, and this is on wood, okay? This is on wood panel, so the texture of it is way smoother, strangely. Um, more smooth than if I was painting on canvas, which give you that nice, chunky, textured feel. And I'm not getting that with this. And you can see my color palette of values. Now this is more in black and white that you're seeing. Even though I have, um, I have this green color changeable light. So that's green because of my undertone for the colors that I'm using is predominantly green. That's why you, if this was in red, you don't see those undertones as well, but you do see a lot of the darker blocked in values and that could work as well. Um, here, again, back to my green. If I did a darker blue, it just totally washes it out. Washes it out. So I don't, I'm not doing the blue. And here we are back to our white soft light LED daylight, excuse me. So we're back to the LED and you can see here, I'm um, adding in a lot of those brown sienna skin tones, which is giving that nice uh, olive look. And yes, I'm putting those skin tones in the beard. I'm using that titanium uh, buff, which is not a white. It is a off kind of white. And um, I'm getting that in for the beard and, and, and trying my best to, um, except for right there, of course, trying to get those skin tones in that is still in the beard because underneath the beard is what? A face, a, 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 obviously skin. And I'm still keeping those nice areas where the background is still coming through, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is if I lose too much of my background, I just remix that color. 
And so I know that my color was the buff, um, off-white, and um, turquoise, and a little bit of the caput morton. The mortem color, which was the um, the reddish color that we were using. So here I'm going to come back in with that background color. You can still see it there. And add it in using the same, um, sorry, using the same colors of the background. And then if I lose track of those colors, again, I just make sure that I'm mixing enough. At first, sometimes that always don't work, guys. Uh, and that's okay that if you don't mix enough color at first, you'll obviously know the next time when you're using that color how much you need to mix, okay? So I'm gonna keep uh, right here adding in more of my shadow shapes. And I'm, I'm starting to, to really define some of those wrinkles in the forehead, and not with line, but with shape. So right there, there was a rectangle. Here is a cone shape, another cone shape, another cone shape. You're manipulating your brush to, to literally do what you want it to do, okay? Keeping the skin tone in there. I do want to add a little more of those olives in right over here on the forehead area, just a little bit. Because there's a lot of olives of the skin tone down here in that beard. So I want to put them just a little more in the forehead. And let's try right there in the area of the face. So I just blocked in the circle for the eye. Obviously that's uh, not very detailed and done, all right? But I did want to block in where the eyeball would go. And sometimes I'm noticing working on wood, guys, uh, and I think this is, yeah, I think this is my first painting painting on wood, okay? And I'm noticing that maybe I should not have gessoed this canvas first, the wood piece, but because I had to gesso it, um, it's only because there was a painting underneath this, and I am so sorry, I really wish I had taken a photo of, of this whole thing, this whole uh, frame, I might have. I put it on Google Classroom if I did. Of this before uh, I just sold it. And the only reason I just sold it again is to get rid of that person's old painting that was already there on this wood frame. And I'm going to show you um, the back. And again, this is a nice thrift store find. Okay. And this is the back. And that's literally. Uh, painting on that wood right there. And so I feel as though with oil paints, if you end up painting on wood, don't gesso the wood first. I think going directly onto the wood, adding oil paint. Now, with acrylic, you do have to cover this with gesso, the wood with gesso. But with oils, uh, because of the thick texture of it, I don't think that you would have to um, put gesso on the wood. I'd say just go straight to toning the wood with your background color and then start your painting. Um, that will be my tip if you do go and get a uh, wood to paint on. So I'm going to change my light back to what? I forgot. Was it green? Okay, yes, it was green. So now I'm just going to test out uh, my values, and I noticed something. See, I'm always 
You always want to test out your values before you start moving in to making different shapes, uh, not shapes, adding details as far as hair and things like that. So right here is a whole different other value. So I'm going to use that brown, my burnt sienna. I'm going to curve it because I still want to stick with the formation curves of his bot of his face. So remember that as you're painting and see, uh, and, and some of this is really lifting up. My paint is starting to lift up and I don't want to get too, too um, thick and, and with my painting. But I'm noticing that, y'all, it's, it's, it's lifting up. And I'm using a small brush for this whole painting. I'm using uh, size zeros, and I'm using size ones and twos. Uh, basically, I'm having to do that because um, I'm painting on this small section, which I want to say is an 8 by 10 in this inside part. Um, if I'm wrong, I'll measure it and I'll give you the exact, but I do believe that's this color. So now um, going in, I'm looking at my, right up above here, let me show you, is where I have my reference photo. I'm continually looking at it, um, but on the screen, I put it there for you to look at while I am painting so that you can see how I am uh, really is blocking in values, okay? Color value is the same as, um, color value is the same as black and white. What you do is, again, you can use a color light like this to paint from, or you can uh, turn, take a photo and turn your painting to black and white. Okay, take turn, turn the paint into black and white on your screen. As you can see, he is on our screen as um, as um, hold on, <laughs> that's our trait. It as um, black and white, and this photo actually is a black and white photo, and I'm creating my own color palette for this one, the way I want him to look. So he is, um, he has that nice, I believe that he, he does have that nice olive tone skin. Um, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Only by the black and white photo, that's how, why I say that. So right here, I'm going back in and I'm, I'm, I'm marking, I'm, I'm, at this point, I'm just laying it, laying and leaving a lot of my shadows back in uh, instead of blending too much. Because again, on this wood, it's giving me a whole new um, <laughs> uh, perspective as far as light and shadow. This part down here of the shoulder of his shirt was way too light. I wanted to darken that up. The first thing people see should not be the shoulders or the hat or accessories, unless you want it to. The first thing that um, that people should look at should be the art itself, the face, or not anything around the face, okay? So I'm gonna come in Give a little more shadows here to the hat, the hoodie. Because again, I want to focus. I want the focal point to go to his face. I want people to draw right in to the face. Hey, come on in. I'm just talking again. <laughs> okay, Ella, do she have her... Because he seems to find it better to work with. Oh, wow. 
Man, y'all rock. I, I feel like super dumb in that area. Okay, take time. <laughs> okay. Oh, she responded. See, that big head responded to you. I just love her. <laughs> All right, she probably got busy. All right. Uh, so, going back in, making sure those shadows are nicely defined. Oopsie doopsie. Kind of got rid of that, didn't we? All right, there we go. We put it back in. <laughs> um, remember also where your light is coming in. Let's go over that. If your light is coming in front of view, there's some things, of course, the T-zone of the face will be the brightest, and then uh, everything else could get darker. But in this um, reference here, a lot of the darkness is right over here in the right side. So, of course, I'm going to take my darker colors and really darken right here so that the light is pushing in from the right side right into his face. So let's try to grab a brush to start doing that. Hopefully I can do that without lifting up so much of the paint. And I don't I don't feel I want to change my background color just so it can be dark like it is in the reference. I just want to take my two dark, three darkest colors, which is going to be my dark brown. Let me turn the light back on so we can make sure that we see that. I want to take my dark brown I have over here with a little bit of that dark phthalo turquoise, okay, and a little bit of that Mortem color that I wrote down for you. Now is where I want to come in and, and block out some, some of those shadows, and you can see that that's working right there. Uh -huh. Even more. There we go. And you're going to, and again, using this type of paint, oil paint on wood, you have to lay it thickly and kind of leave it, y'all. That's, that's been my strategy for this one. I want to do a line right there, too. I know that was an awkward line, but let me take a little bit of that light blue. Let's see. There we go. My light blue is right here. And it's okay for you to turn, like you see, I did your light source back on and off to see your natural colors. It's okay for you to do that, guys. You don't have to leave that light on to the color part, okay? Now, I want it to blend somewhat to the background. I'm gonna grab some of that medium. I think this part as well is just of the hood is just a little too bright. There we go. There we go. So now I can hit some highlights on this other side a little bit more if I tone that side down. There we go. Mm -hmm. And we're going to darken over here as well for the shoulder a little more. Now I can begin adding a little. And one color, I'm going to mention one color that I have not used. And, and if you've noticed that on my palette that I haven't used, and that's white, okay? And that's why, reason why, is I'm going to use some of the whites with the colors of the background over here 
more than I am over here. I'm going to use that off-white for the skin tone mostly. And then the white for the other parts coming in. So that's going to give us a whole uh, different um, look of lights and darks and shadows for that. All right. There's that. There we go. And so we don't want to lose our shape of his mustache. I mean, his beard. I keep saying mustache, but that is a mustache up there. So we don't want to you lose any of that. And we obviously do not want to lose our shadow shapes. Okay? So those are important things. That's my brown with my phthalo. So really establish those deeper parts where that skin is boldly coming in. I am really enjoying painting this one. Um, it's different only because I am using a different color that I have never used before. Isn't that surprising? And that will be the buff white color, that off white. And I'm telling you, I'm having some fun with that color. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm trying not to get this too blue and I think with me, um, I'm going to have to really amplify up the oranges in here so that I don't go warm. So let's see if I can do that with the buff and the burnt sienna. So buff and burnt sienna mixed together. Let's see what we can do. Okay, not bad, not bad at all. Whoa, let's get that back up there. You know what, I'll just put it right over here. Because apparently it's not taped down as well as I want it to be. I can look at it right here. There we go. Dun, dun. Let's keep the shape. It's nice nose. And then, that works. That really works. Kind of pull in some more of those gold tones. Yellows, golden tones of his skin. And some browns. Go with the brown. Closer to the shadows. It's really good for uh, wood. It's really nice painting on. So I hope that you guys do get a chance to um, take advantage of going to maybe a thrift store and grabbing you some um, some wood to paint on. This has really been an interesting painting to do so. So now I'm gonna turn this light differently. See what if I can get with a yellow Yes, that's nice. Okay, so you can really see the um, blues. I mean, the blues still in the background, mimicking through the um, the skin. All right, you can still, and this is a warm yellow. So a warm yellow against the coolness of the painting 
really gives you a nicer, nice um, temperature. So that's a good thing, guys. So if you're painting under warm light and you are really um, getting some a cool color palette, keep that in mind. And if you're painting warm, a warm painting, uh, using an opposite uh, light would work. It's going in now. Getting some of those details back in that I had here and there. There we go. Hmm. I'm very happy with this stage right now. Very happy. Um, so my next step is it's to a step since I got a lot of shadows going on on this other side. I want to grab some white and I want to start pulling in the light. So it's Kiro Skiro's concern, shadow and light. So I'm gonna get my uh, background color Mix it with white and the, um, the teal and the compute mont, uh, mortem. Mix those together. And create me a nice, a nice light area. Just to blend softly. And so I, what I'm taking now is a really a clean brush. And I'm starting to and I shouldn't use my apron, but I do. I wipe the brush and I go softly on top of the hard lines to soften it up and to blend it together. So anywhere on the skin that should not have a hard line, if you do that technique, that's better for your painting. And with this, you gotta be careful too. Some of it's gonna lift up some of that paint for that area, I didn't mind, okay? Um, I like the hard line around the nose area, uh, but the cheeks here, I want to soften it up just a smidget. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lightly brush it like a feather. Brush it like a feather. Then I'll come in later with all those defined hard lines if I miss them, okay? Right in the nose area, let's soften that up a little more. Okay. I'm going to get a little closer. I cannot. Yes, I can. Let's get a little bit closer here. You can see. There we go. Starting to really form into who he looks like in the uh, reference photo. And just imagine right now we just have, oh wow, I'm just getting paint everywhere. Now this is the joys of us painting, right? Um, right now this is just shadows and lights and highlights everywhere and blocking in those shapes. We haven't even began to put in hair and texture uh, texture from the hair so just imagine when you are painting establishing those details so right here I'm going to go in with a different texture since I mentioned texture right and I'm going to dab and the reason I'm dabbing that because the texture of the head scarf that's on his head or the hoodie is like really blotchy that's how you can literally change the texture of an object just by using the brush in a different manner. Getting that hoodie darker right there. And 
my go my staple color for this is the wood, the mortium. So of course I'm gonna use most of its color for shadows. And all of that is hair in there. And this is the deep, the depth of the darkest part. And what I use for black is I mix my brown with my darkest blue. Brown with the darkest blue. Notice how that just made that darker than all the other darks brown with my darkest uh, blue. If you're using ultramarine blue, you mix ultramarine blue with the black. That just keeps lifting up on me over and over. So I'm probably going to have to let that dry some more before I come in and add more shadow because it just keeps lifting up. So if your paint keep lifting up on the wood, that is hint to you to stop painting <laughs> and give it a, a day or two for it to dry. That's why, um, Ms. Sherman, I uh, give you such a longer, long time to work on your paintings, especially when you are doing oil paints, because these different stages sometimes take time to dry. And um, I want you to be able to allow them to dry unless you're going to be lifting up that paint every time you do a brush stroke. Okay. So again, um, this is how your painting looks in the soft, the white of the light. Okay. Natural light, white. If you turned it to the yellow, soft light, that's the look you'll get. And then when you turned it to your green, because the colors that we're using is mostly green, you're getting this in black and white. So your black and white, your soft colors, and then your white. Okay, that's stage part two. Thank you for watching. Part three is going to be um, getting the white in, okay, everywhere that I want white mixed with something as far as highlights are concerned, and also um, darkening a little more on that left side, just, just a little bit, not a lot. Uh, especially under the hood and this eye area that needs to get more darker like that area. Um, and then adding in some hair. He has a lot of hair to add in. That's that last and final stage for the details and, of course, really defining the eyes even more because right now they're just, they're just blocked in. All right. Bye-bye.